Hello, Professor. My name is Rafael Lopez, and today I'm answering the five questions for the Sociology 101 assignment activity, Body Ritual Among the Nakarima. Um, today I want to answer the first question as, what were five things you found odd or strange or grotesque about the Nakarima? Um, the first thing that I found odd, I'll go with about the Nakarima and um, their ways of doing things in life and their rituals and what they believed in and their ideologies and how they should handle sickness and um, a lot of different things. The first one being uh, laceration. It was something that they did. Um, only the men participated in it. Um, it was like a ritual where they take sharp instruments and they cut their faces. Um, it's a pretty disturbing uh, ritual. And um, I find it very odd because, I mean, people don't tend to willingly cut their face open so that was the first thing um mouth men was also very interesting um so the nakarima would do um these procedures in the mouth um they were very fascinated by um the mouth and they thought that um if they didn't perform these rituals that i'll explain that they would lose their teeth um people wouldn't be attracted to them they lose their status and um the procedure was the medicine men would take um, their instruments and if there was a tooth decay um, somewhere along the jawline and the upper bottom teeth, they would actually cut um, that decay um, or take a chunk out of it to make it bigger and put magic like potion and um, magic chemicals or particles, um, if you will, in that decay and that hole that they made. And if um, they'd pick one guy and they'd name him um, the mouth man, the holy mouth man that they would take, um, if he didn't have decay that they could cut open, they would remove a, te or a tooth or a section along the tooth and they would um, place that uh, particles and chemicals in there that they believe were magic um, that they got from um, potions and um, different stuff like that. So... Another part I want to touch on that was very odd to me was the Latipso ceremony. Um, the Latipso ceremony was basically when um, you'd have sick natives, um, children called it the place where you go to die because that's um, essentially what it was because it was surprising that they said that as many natives survived because it was kind of more like a torture chamber more than like a, I mean, a ceremony where people get better. So if a sick native was in there, um, they would take uh, magically charmed needles um, and inject them into um, people there. They would just lay on their hard beds. They couldn't really do anything else. They were stripped of their clothes. They'd have to, um, men would have to excrete um, in a sacred vessel. Um, and women were um, manipulated by the medicine men. Um, it was very, very dark and... Um, it almost was like the opposite of um, what you generally associate with making people better um, in terms of uh, healing them physically. So it was a kind of a torturous process where um, they would also do the mouth procedures as well in the Latipso ceremonies. Um, another thing I found really odd was the witch doctors and how they would have to kind of reverse... Um, Curses and help support these kids and people with um, a lot of fears in their head and they would have to come and support them because it was believed that mothers put the curse on their children um, and the witch doctors basically you tell them your biggest fears um, your darkest things going on in your life and they would have to to um, help you um, get better because it was believed that these people could have curses and um, the witch doctor was just another example of how um, they believed a lot in like uh, magic and um, oh, what's the best word for this? Witchcraft, you could say, um, curses and just a lot of paranormal things and paranormal ideologies that they believed in um, that could help and hurt them in the long run as their ideology was the body is just something that ages and gets decreasingly worse and needs to needs these rituals in order to maintain its status of um, wellness and if those rituals aren't performed whether they harm um, physically or not and whether you know you, if you lacerate your face if you don't do it though your body is going to turn into this 
horrible, dying, diseased thing. So they're basically saying, okay, well, the greater good is that, you know, we, we cut our faces because um, in the long run, it's better than being diseased and this, that, because if they believe they don't do these rituals that can cause pain, um, they'll end up in an even worse situation. So I think that's where the, my conclusion is, that's where the logic is drawn from that um, they do these, uh, what seems very um, dark rituals to be a better alternative than what they're afraid of. Um, the last thing I found odd was the medicine men. Um, it, it was like as if they are, oh, I mean, they are harming and hurting nerves in the mouth and pulling teeth and uh, manipulating women and injecting needles in people and um, doing a lot of dark stuff. And um, I find it very odd because um, when you associate the word medicine, at least in our um, social environment here, um, in Washington, you want to say pure up, you can go that narrow. We associate medicine with um, supportive people that do everything they can to make you better, not inflict more harm. Um, so it's like these medicine men are inflicting more harm. So I thought um, that's kind of weird. You know, that's something that I've never, you don't associate that term with. So um, that was also disturbing, odd, and um, interesting to me. Um, second question is, what about your culture and the way you were socialized made you think these aspects of the Nakarima culture were bizarre? Um, I have to say that, um, the reason I find these things odd and bizarre and disturbing is because the way I was raised is, um, I mean, if you want to touch on some points, uh, first of all, you don't cut your face. You don't inflict harm on yourself or anyone else. You be respectful to everyone and you keep your hands to yourself. Um, I mean, when I go to the dentist, at least, I mean... Um, you don't get your teeth pulled, um, or magic potions, if you will, for a ritual. Um, you get professional procedures that are paid for and you do them for the sole purpose of making you, um, better physically, um, and mentally. It seemed like the Nakarima people were only doing, I mean, it seemed like they were only doing physical harm and, whether they believed in, and obviously their rituals in their head came true, so they thought so, but at least in my, in my life and, um, my, uh, social environment, the generalization of when you go to a dentist is to make you happy, healthy, and physically, um, healthy, so mental and physical health at the end of the long run, and, um, you know, real mental and physical health um not something that is bully that can be considered a religion or a belief but something that um is proven science is behind it that you'll feel better mentally and physically after this it's not necessarily something you have to believe in to feel good after the dentist or get your wisdom teeth pulled it's just gonna happen um it's not necessarily something you sit there and and think about too deeply because you know that um amoxicillin and painkillers are going to do the job for you you don't have to do a ritual to to um, understand that this is going to make you healthier. The proof is in the science. Um, I would say, um, just, I mean, from top to bottom, you consider medicine, uh, men, um, when that word is thrown around, you'd say you'd probably socialize that word with a doctor and doctors are not meant to harm you. They don't inject you with the needles that are, um, without of a hundred percent science backed up um, chemical or chemicals that will help you get better. You don't inject people with um, magic chemicals um, that is based on religion and belief. You um, use things and instruments that will 100% promise getting the job done um, for your health and safety. And I think that's the biggest thing with the, the medicine men is they're more religious based and and this days in society when it comes down to serious operations we keep religion out we tend to do that i mean obviously you religion could follow you anywhere but at least for in terms of procedures we don't socialize different religions with um these specific and need be very proper procedures like in uh healthcare. um the fourth, or sorry, the third question is, how does our socializ socialization impact how we view others? And I think our soci socialization impacts how we view others because you are a product of your environment. Um, 
if you were raised around um, people that break the law, you're going to look at people that abide by the law and think, hmm, that's weird. I mean, why are they doing this? Um, I've heard bad things about um, the law all my life and why not to follow it and how you do this and how you get away with this and how you get away with that. And the people that abide by the law are going to be looking at the criminals and being like, oh, what low lives? I mean, you know, follow the justice system, follow what the government says. And it's two ends of the spectrum. And whatever one you're born into is going to affect what your look on the other one is. If I'm born in the people that break the law, I am going to be more likely to um, be judgmental of people that abide it, vice versa. Um, and I think that's exactly why I look at the Nacarim of people as bizarre, because I was not born into these rituals, into these beliefs, into these socializations that normalize these things like lacerations, medicine men, and Latipso ceremonies. So um, our socialization impacts our, how we view others because we're a product of our environment and we're going to judge people based on what we were taught to judge them by. Um, moving on to the fourth question. Um, wait. Just one second, sorry, I'm looking at these questions. One. Oh, it's four questions, sorry, I thought it was five. Um, so, uh, moving on to the fourth question and final. What elements of our culture or the way we are socialized would people from other nations find odd or disturbing? Come up with a few examples. Um, us, at least. Um, I grew up in uh, Spanway, Washington, and Washington... Um, same-sex marriage is um, a big thing that people talk about. Um, weed is legal. Um, the death penalty is something that um, is legal in some states. Um, I was just going to say it broadly as America, um, because I know it's, it's obviously legal in Texas. They're one of the ones known to give out um, the most death penalties. And then I would say um, our diversity in race. So I'm going to start with same-sex marriage and um, how our culture and the way our, I'm socialized, at least in my environment, um, how other people would find that odd or disturbing. So the first example, um, is same sex marriage. Um, I think other people would find that odd or disturbing, um, in the sense that it is something that is very judged in religion in society, um, among people. A lot of people like to make jokes about it. A lot of people like to, um, choose to be extremely offended by it, um, by the way, whether they were raised in a household or raised by a religion that said, do not be gay, lesbian, um, bisexual, whatever you want to call it. Um, in the sense that, you know, whether you're gay, lesbian, you know, you're a girl, you know what I'm getting at. Um, in these ways, meaning that they're against all of them, whatever one you want to pick. These people that I'm talking about that are judgmental of it are all against it. Um, so they can pick anyone and be not okay with it. I think the reason that people are not okay with it is just because um, generations of people have been very judgmental of it and all they're teaching their kids are to judge it. And so therefore they can't come up with their own ideas because their parents from a young age are telling them, hey, it's not okay. Or... Um, the religion is telling them that. And um, this is a, um, I would say, big problem because personally, um, I am uh, a person that has no problem with a per other person's sexuality. Um, it is not affecting me. It's not affecting anyone else. Um, it is their life. It is their personal decision. And it should be um, accepted by everybody. That's what I believe personally. But I do respect everyone that doesn't accept it. Um, well, that's religion, personal view. Um, I respect everyone's views 100% to the fullest. However, I personally believe that same-sex marriage should be um, legal and accepted. Um, another thing is a reason why people would find weed disturbing would be, or odd or disturbing, because weed is only accepted. And, I mean, it's not necessarily popular among um, every single person in the country i mean everyone's gonna have a different perspective when we say weed um it is legal in the washington so that's my environment and so um i would say that people around the world that um and states and
countries that don't have it legalized are going to look at that and be like, what is going on with this state? Why are they legalizing it? Um, that's a general one. Death penalty. Obviously, not every state um, condones this. Not every place in the world condones this. So it's something that could be found auto disturbing as it is accepted in the United States. One of those places being Texas. Um, I wanted to touch on that, kind of get um, into a region where I'm still socialized with. This is, you know, I live in the country. Obviously, I'm going to be associated with um, things like the death penalty by hearing about it and doing studies about it because it is legal in our country. Um, and the last part, I would say racial diversity could be found auto disturbing because there are a lot of people out there that are racist, that do not like certain people. And America is a very diverse country. Um, you have um, Asians, African-Americans, um, all, um, I mean, 100% Americans here that were born here and they have a generations on, um, Native Americans, uh, Mexicans. You have a lot of different races in one place at once, and I think that um, a lot of people might find that auto disturbing because some places in the world and um, other nations um, strictly want their people to be in their country, and um, if other people are there, they're very judgmental and they do not like the ideology of that. So I would say the diversity um, of this country could be auto disturbing to other nations because it is something that um, is embraced here. Um, in the states for the most part by a lot of people is our cultural diversity um and obviously it's been um kind of expressed in the institution as well as colleges love to see diverse students come on campus and from different countries and nations and um some people around the world just don't like that they don't go for that so um that's just something that um i found personally that would be auto disturbing to different nations but um well, without further ado, um, that is my answers to all my questions. Um, thank you.